Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior. Praise God. My name is Leah Karanja. I am a member of Nairobi West Church Parish, South B Congregation, and I am born again. Christ is Lord and Savior of my soul. I am so delighted to have this chance to come and share the Word of God with you this day as we celebrate and mark our church school week for this year. I want us to share with you the word of God, and I pray that the Spirit of God shall give us the renewal of our minds and soul, that we may receive it in a fresh and a new way. We are going to pray as we start our word this day. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we worship you, Lord, because of who you are. We give you all the glory and all the honor, Jehovah. We seek your presence this day, dear Lord, as we share your word, everlasting Father, that you may open our hearts and our ears, Lord, that we may hear from you in a new way, that, Lord, we may listen to your word according to the way the Holy Spirit shall guide us. For it is a prayer of faith in Jesus' mighty name we pray and believe. Amen. Kindly I'll allow me to remove this one for proper communication. And you are going to start our reading this morning by sharing with you the words from the book of Luke, chapter 15, from verse 17, all the way to 24. And we shall read. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Praise God. We are going to hear about the amazing love of our God. Our theme for this year as church school, it is about the amazing love of our God and our Father. And we are being guided by the book of 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 which says, see what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that's who we are. We are the children of God, despite our nature. As God was talking to Moses and sending him to the children of Israel, in Deuteronomy chapter 7, from verse 6 to 11, and he was telling them about how God chose them to be his own children. They were the least people because they were not righteous. It is not because they were good before them, but the desire and the love that God had for these children. It was because he wanted to maintain and to keep the promise he had given to, his, to their ancestors. And so he was telling them he loved them despite their sinful nature. Brethren, today we are here because of God's love. It is not because of who we are. It is not because we are righteous before him. It is not because we follow his commands, but it is only because of his great and immeasurable love that God has for us. So as we celebrate our church school this week, I am a church school teacher in South B, and it is by that I am sharing this word to you about the amazing love of God. And the love of God comes in many ways. Sometimes we wander away from his presence and think that we are still with him without our knowledge. Sometimes we walk away and disrespect his word, and it is a choice that we make sometimes. As we are going to hear this story of the prodigal son, it is a story that we've heard several times, but I'm praying that we may receive it afresh in the mighty name of Jesus. And the son decided to ask God for his own share. If you read from verse 11, 
you see how the story goes, the son desiring to own, and the desire to own something for himself, despite him being the second son, and the good thing is that the father did not stop him. The Bible tells us that the father decided to share his property among the two sons that he had. Remember that this son who is asking for his own share is the young son. And customarily, it was known that in those days, the firstborn was the one who would receive his first share of inheritance before the second son. But this time, this son is asking for his own share. To me, that looks and appears to be a disrespectful way of asking for things, and it was like he was trying to demand from his father. Though the father agreed and gave him what he wanted and what he asked for. After the son left home with everything that he owned, after what he was given by his dad, he decided to go to a far country, and that is where he went and squandered everything that he had, not caring about tomorrow, and he spent everything not caring about anything, and he knew that all that he was using was all that he was supposed to get from his father. After squandering everything that he was given by his father, we know and we read about how that place and the country that he went to got into a famine and it was a great famine. And we see this man being a very dejected young man, wondering where will I go, I've misused everything, wondering where am I going to eat, and we see him going to be, a f he's, he went to be feeding the pigs, and he was feeding from what the pigs were eating. He went on and continued feeding the pigs after he got that job. And the good thing is that one day and one time, he came back into his senses. And when he came back is, into his senses, he decided to go back to his father. He had that small meeting within himself. And he remembered who his father was. He remembered how much his father had, how many slaves his father had at home. And the good thing is he was not afraid to confront his father. He was not afraid to confront the situation he had put himself in. And he decided to wake up and go back to his father's home. And the sweet thing about his father, when he went back home, the father was waiting with open arms. And I'm imagining if it's me and my son went away and I know what he did, I would be angry at him first, of course, but what this father did portrays the amazing love a father can have towards his child. The father waited for the son, and when he saw him, he welcomed him with open arms. He hugged him, he kissed him, and when the son went went on saying something, the father just silenced him with this love. It is a love that cannot even be explained. The son was very sorry. He tried explaining to his father, I don't even want to come and own anything. I don't want even to be replaced as a son. All I want is to be like one of your slaves. But his father did not even consider that. The joy that his father had was because he was, his son was dead, he was lost, but now he is found. The beautiful thing about his dad, he never even listened to the other son who was complaining and who was jealous. The first thing he did is that he protected the younger son from the older son when he tried to complain, I've been here, I've been working for you, you never even gave me a small lamb. But all that did not matter to the father at that moment. We see the father even asking for the finest robes to be put on this son who, was, who came back home. We see the father asking for the best ring and the beautiful ring to be put on his fingers. We see the father asking for the fat and calf to be slaughtered, for celebrations to be made. And the love of the father is well portrayed through the gifts that he gave to his, ch to his child. Three major things that we learn and we get from the story, as Jesus was giving it out and he was trying to portray about the love of Jesus and the love of God towards us. There are so many times we decide and make decisions that are not wise. 
There are many times we choose to disrespect the word of God. There are many times we choose to walk away from his presence. There are many times we choose to deny ourselves the wise counsel we get from those who know the word of God. There are many times we choose to walk on our own and we move from the fold. But the word of God says that when we come back to that, to our senses and realize what we have done, God is always ready for us. He's ready to restore us. He's ready to give us back our ownership as the sons in his kingdom. We make foolish decisions sometimes. And God allows us to go. But what happens is that sometimes God throws our way things that make us realize we are headed the wrong direction. But when we realize that and we are truthful and we repent truthfully before him, he's ready to give us back another chance. So one lesson I learned from this story and then could teach us something is that he, this father allowed his son to go. He gave him the freedom to choose. Sometimes you have even to let our children have and make their own decisions. Sometimes you have to allow them make their own choices, only that we have to be sure that one day, if it is a bad decision, they shall come back to us. And as parents, what are we supposed to do? We are supposed to be waiting for them, hopefully. And even if they come having made those wrong decisions, we should always embrace them. Another thing I get from this story is that the father honestly waited for his son to return. The same way our Father in heaven waits for us to return back to him. Sometimes you can find yourself in a situation you don't even know how you got there. You find yourself, you are eating with the pigs. You are even feeding the pigs. You are eating from what you are collecting from the ground with them, and you find yourself in that murkiness. But the good thing is that the Lord is always waiting for us. The Lord is giving us that second chance with open arms. The love of our father has no goodbye. Just the same case, this father didn't have a goodbye to his son. He allowed him to go, but he waited for him to come back. He gave him the right to choose and to decide, and that happened. When we open our eyes and we let the presence of the Lord in our lives, even if you are being held backwards by the enemy, in the problems that you may find yourselves without your knowledge, the Lord is always ready for us to return. If we return to him in truth and in full repentance, he's always ready to come and to wait for us. The father restores us. He restored the son. Because when he asked for the best robes and the ring, and the sandals to be put on his feet. In, a, in the same way, when the Lord, when, when we go back to the Lord, he puts us a robe and gives us a robe of salvation. He embraces us with his love and he gives us his grace. The peace that we experience when we come back to our Lord, it is a peace that we cannot even exchange with anything. After we come back to our to our, to, our, to our senses and realize that we have been away from our Father. When we come back, he gives us some peace that we cannot even explain. He clothes us with his salvation. He puts us through and gives us the ring who is the Holy Spirit who will always guide and protect us. Again, he does not just leave us like that. He gives us the sandals and he gives us the word of God that guides us, such that any time you are moving forward, any time you are going out, we have the power of his salvation. We have the word and we have the Holy Spirit to always be our guide. It doesn't matter what situation you may be in. It doesn't matter the kind of situation, the kind of decision you may have made without your knowledge, out of disobedience. The Lord is always ready and waiting for you. All you need to do is to take a step of faith and decide, I'm going back to my father, despite where the enemy may have put you. Just make that wise decision to go back to your father. If this boy didn't make that wise decision, I am so happy because 
he never realized and he never even gave the enemy a chance to realize that he had made a bad decision. And it could have been, he could even have gotten some backlash from his father, but it never happened. He repented truthfully and the father was willing to forgive him. When we come back to our Lord, he does not accuse us anymore. He does not even let our enemies accuse us. He gives us the choice and the power to be his sons, to be his daughters, to remain in his kingdom. Romans 8.1 says, there is no more condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. We are no longer judged because we have decided and we have made the wise decision to go back to our father. In Acts 2, that 8, Paul said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. For the forgiveness of our sins, you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The condition is if we repent truthfully. The Father is waiting for us with open arms. We are there because God is there to give us the courage, to give us the power and the knowledge to move forward. We are here because the Lord has enabled us to stand in his presence. And as, even as we continue, as we finish this year, and we are reminding ourselves of his love, all we can say is not that we do not even deserve his love. So many have gone, many are still in the hospitals, but God has still preserved us. He has given us his love. And it is because of his love that is new each and every morning, that is new each and every day, has given us the knowledge and the power to be alive. I thank God because this far we've come, it is not that we know how to protect ourselves, it is not that we know how to live right, but it is only because of his amazing love. May God bless you and may God be with you as you continue making this decision to come back into his fold because he's waiting for you with open arms to embrace you and to give you kisses and to show you and protect you from the accuser who is our enemy. May God bless you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we adore you, Lord. We give you glory because of Lord, you are the Lord who created us. And we thank you, Jehovah, even for the word that has come to us, dear Lord. May you, Jehovah, continue protecting it, protecting it and protecting us, O oh Lord, that we may continue knowing that your love is so amazing and there is nothing that can take away from your love from us. For in Jesus' mighty name, do we pray and believe. Amen.